In this video, we'll talk about match. Now, if you go back to 1960s, a lot of languages came into picture. We got B, we got C language. And then based on those languages, we got new languages. We got C++ in 1983. But when Python was under development in 1991 or 1990s, basically, they missed one thing from other languages. And it made sense because when you look at those languages, especially with C, we got EFELS, we got ELSIF, which we have talked about. Uh, but then they also have something called Switch. Now, Switch is a great way to uh, do things which we have done. So, if you look at the code, whatever we have done here, let, let, let me remove this part and just print uh, 3. Now, this can be done with the help of Switch case as well, which is there in the other languages. So, instead of using EFELS, we can use Switch. Now, this is how it looks like in C language if you use Switch for the same thing. But there is one problem. Everywhere if you see, there is a break. And... Uh, that was a concern and in Java also they carried the same thing but later on they removed it. Now we don't need to use break in switch in Java but C still exists. Now Python says, okay, there's a problem. Why do we use a break here? Uh, and maybe, I'm not sure why they, they left it but switch was not a part of Python language and it's a part of major languages. And this changed in one of the versions which is 3.10 and uh, now we can use switch but with a different name. And the name is match. Okay, let's use that. So I will just copy the same stuff because we are going to use this. And let's create a new file called matchdemo.py. And here I'm going to type it. Of course, we need a num variable as well. So we got num is equal to three. And I want to do the same thing, but with the help of match. Now, how do we do it? It's quite simple, actually. So instead of this syntax, what we do is we say match and we use a variable which is num. Now, the syntax is match. Okay, that's what you have to use. And then the variable. Now, inside this, you instead of specifying the condition, we don't have to manually check if the numbers are matching. You can use a case here. So if the case is one, I will just give a tab because now this is a part of, this case is a part of the match. So you will say match uh, num. Then you compare with the first case. If the case is one, it will print one. Then if the case is two, then it will print two. Then if the case is three, it will print three. And likewise, I will just change everything else here. So this is case five. Okay, now we don't have uh, we don't have else case. So instead of this, we need to use something else. So you have to say case underscore. Now this defines the else part. Okay, and we can say this is incorrect. Now if you look at this syntax, which is better than what we have done here, because in this we are checking for the values manually. And here, because see, ultimately, if you just want to match the value, we can use something like this. And this looks much better. And if I remove the extra spaces in between, it will be less lines, less lines of code, uh, if that makes sense. So we can use something called match. So instead of using else if, we can use match, which looks better. Now, this is good for matching. But if you want to check for conditions and stuff, we can still use if else. So yeah, that's match for you. But then I, we have not... We're not running this yet, so I will just say python match underscore demo dot py. And if I clear this, let's run this once again. So you can see we got three. But if I say value is six, and we don't have six, so it will should it should print incorrect. So things are working out. Okay. And this is the better syntax compared to what you have in C, as you can see on the screen. So yeah, that's how you use match. See you in the next video.